Hey, welcome back to Ultra Life Today, where we're having a unique opportunity to talk to a doctor of veterinary medicine that has a specialty in holistic veterinary care. It's Dr. Terry Wood. He is uh, has had his clinic out in Mustang, Oklahoma, I believe, since 1986. And I've heard about this gentleman and his practice over the years with people who were basically at the end of their rope for what standard of care could do for their animals through other veterinary, uh, standard veterinary practices. And somehow they heard about Dr. Terry Wood. I'm sure it's a God thing and divine appointments. But nonetheless, we've had two really cool segments. We talked a little bit about food in the last segment. Dr. Wood was very quick to say, hey, look, you know, anything probably that you can't pronounce, anything that's grains, don't feed those. Don't feed dairy to your animals either, either dogs or cats, which I found really fascinating because everybody thinks the bowl of cream is the thing, right? You know? Yeah, definitely. So anyway, welcome back to this segment again, uh, Dr. Wood. And uh, did, did we, can we just wrap up briefly the food thing so that maybe we can put a, a true fork in this for all the people out there that fight over food? One of the questions I had, you know, okay, so you said no grains, no dairy for, for that's, felines and canines, can you actually give them raw meats or cooked meats if they're the appropriate type, or do you just avoid that altogether? Well, it's, you know, that's kind of the $64 question. I know my national organization, the AVMA, is opposed to raw feeding. Okay. Um, I tell people, well, if they want to do it, just don't let it drip in your salad if it's in the oh, right. Grain. Yeah, be <laughs> sure and wash your hands before you eat your own dinner, right? Right. And, you know, <laughs> okay. they're... There, there have been instances of disease transmission through the raw foods. Uh, yeah. it happened with the dry kibbles, uh, the way the, you know, the industry works. It, it's not a guarantee. You know, you can't get some E. coli or salmonella with that, too. Right. So, you know, and the thing is, you don't have to go with the exotic, you know, kangaroo, alligator, you know, very, 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 very expensive diets uh, or the hydrolyzed products, which we do carry one. But, uh, you know, things like, you know, probably my go-to is uh, rice is technically a grass. It's not a grain. So, Interesting. Uh, yeah. I just learned well, something. I'll suggest uh, lamb and rice. You know, it's easily available. Okay. If somebody's a hunter or has uh, somebody that kills deer and processes it and then throws it out because they don't use it, I said, make friends with them. I had a guy nice. with had chronic diarrhea. He fed it potatoes and venison, and the cat did just great on that. Fantastic. And of course, cats are probably good carnivores, so they've got to have about a 75% protein, dogs less than that. Yeah. So, the, so here's the question for me moving next. Adam and I have the privilege because so many of them are well familiar with our products. We have relationships with integrative medicine, functional medicine doctors, orthomolecular doctors, clinical nutritionists that have a lot of continuing education in this arena of knowing the cause. And a lot of them, uh, doctor, use some really interesting diagnostic testing to be able to determine what's really wrong with that human being at the root level, at the cellular level, and then devising that roadmap for health. What do you use in terms of specialized diagnostic testing in the world of holistic veterinary medicine? How, what's that all about? That's a great question. <laughs> well, are, are, you, are, you guys, are you guys getting into kind of uh, the genomic testing, which is kind of getting pretty sophisticated on the human side? Um, you know, some of that is available, especially for the respiratory diseases that have been, you know, real, you know, common here just recently. But no, it's it, it for me. It's it's usually just trial and error. I know the, you know the the gentleman, the veterinarian that I heard originally about the the food. He had us uh, put the pets on uh, just green beans, potatoes for six weeks to basically cleanse them and and get everything going. And then he would take uh, one ingredient, a small amount, feed it for two days. Keep a logbook. Did you notice any uh, seeds? Oh, the oh, elimination, so elimination diet. diet. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. It takes you know you do four ingredients a month. It's you have to be have patience, but uh, you know it works. And and the very first one I did, I told you the dog, you know, seizure stopped, skin cleared up with just that. And yeah. what the pet reacted to was tuna, and none of the foods the owner had been feeding had tuna in them. But the dog had, he gave it two ounces of tuna. 
and it had really bad seizures, skin broke out. And she said, should I give it any more tuna? And it's like, no, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> wow. So I've, I've heard of this thing called titer testing. If, if there's like a handful of things that you might use as tools to diagnose things, I know you said trial and error, and we're huge believers in the human equation of hands-on and looking at and learning that way. We learn so much from doctors that come and tell us that. You know, I'm, I'm scared of doctors that won't, don't want to put their hands on people, Adam, because I think it's so important. But um, so well, what some, is, what some is, doctors sometimes would want to put their hands on me, but for the wrong reason. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, so what is titer testing? What's that all about? What, 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 how, how does someone yeah. engage you with You mean that? like titer, T-I-T-R-E? Like T-I-T-E-R? T-I-T-E-R, I think. Okay. Yeah. And it's like t from titration. Right. Yeah, what they do is they take serum and they dilute it out, do a serial dilution on an antigen plate, and then when it quits reacting, oh, okay. Antibody complexes. That's your titer, you know. And, and the the bigger, the lower number, the better your titer. I know when I was a large animal vet, we had some cattle had an outbreak of leptospirosis, and I think we had a titer on one of the cows for like one to thirty five thousand. And the labs, wow. are you messing with us? I don't know. We've had some several abortions in there. No, nope, that's an honest titer. But wow. uh, as far wow. as what what we can do in practice. Um, the, the federal government does not recognize rabies titers be, as being protective for rabies. They still require vaccinations. Now, the state of Hawaii, uh, if I send a pet, a dog or a cat to Hawaii, I can get a, a rabies titer done at the Kansas State University Diagnostic Lab. They're the only civilian lab that does that, and they consider a certain level protective. What we can do, but the government doesn't recognize it, so it's just that's just for pets to Hawaii. Now, I get myself tested for titers because I've been vaccinated and been exposed to rabies. I always have a high titer, which is a little scary, but, uh, um, you know, but for pets, they, they require the, the vaccine. What we can test for is for the distemper and parvo. And, you know, we just take a simple uh, blood draw, send it to the lab, and then they'll uh, for the, you know, they'll tell us positive or negative. And if they say it's positive, that means that they're, they're equating that with a protective level of immunity. However, there's another part of the immune system, the cellular immunity, that we don't have an easy test for. So mm. it's not an absolute ironclad. There's no way your pet can get distemper or parvo, but realistically, it's probably a pretty pretty reasonable shot. And and I will I will do that. I have clients coming from all over because a lot of veterinarians won't won't even do it. Uh, I had a client drive up from Fort Worth because they're, uh, they they were in there for something. The vet said, well, you got to vaccinate it. And they said, we're not here for vaccinations. We'd like to do titer testing. And they said, well, you don't belong in my office. You need to get out. Wow. So they did. That's kind of shallow. Wow. Wow. I, why, why would they even say that? I mean, that seems pretty well, shallow. Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, we've, we've run into some oncologists that have, have treated their patients pretty yeah, disrespectfully. That's true. You, know, you know, either my way or, or the, way highway. the highway. That's yeah, right. That's right. Kind of, yeah. So we, we have a lot of doctors, uh, Dr. Wood, that are anti-aging and regenerative medicine doctors. Is there anything in the animal world that you can do? I mean, obviously diet's critical and you've really pointed out to us how important that is to change the, the destination of the animal, long-term health and longevity and, and, and well-being. But are there some like key anti-aging strategies that you'd say, look, we can do this. This is rubber meets the road and this is gonna change the landscape of your pet's journey on this earth. Yeah, I think so. And you know, of course in the, human world, they talk about body, mind, and spirit. And we encourage people, you know, be, and we'll talk about the medical stuff, but I encourage that interaction with the pets, healthy interactions, taking them on walks, letting them do a snippy walk. You know, okay, you didn't make a mile, but your dog was checking the internet for all the things, you know, let them do that. That lets them be a dog mm -hmm. and interact with your pet, have fun with them, play with them, give them some enrichment activities. You know, don't just give them a treat, put it in uh, like a you know one of those toy things and freeze it and say okay it's in there but you got to work for it um, you know that's real important I think because some people don't interact with their pets wow. and you know they they they're a pack animal they need that um, okay. as far as you know the of course the diet is huge but 
uh, one of the reasons I have such a, a big interest in minerals is that the way I explain it to people is that every cell in our body is like a little battery. And what do batteries need in order to function? They need minerals. You buy a motorcycle battery and you put it in, oh, well, guess what? It doesn't work. You got to put the acid in and charge it up. Right. When you put those minerals in, you're allowing that battery to take a charge and to work and function and to be recharged. No minerals, no work. And so, and that's the big thing is that most minerals are not bioavailable because I've heard you use the terms bioavailable, getting yes. in the cell, and that yes. is crucial. And so that's, that, uh, that took me a long time to figure out, but I've actually come up with a couple of formulas. Uh, but yes, you know, specific minerals, um, you know, like magnesium is huge. There's not any uh, ca uh, enzymatic cascade, any enzyme system that doesn't depend on magnesium. Um, and then, you know, iodine to help support the thyroid gland, uh, copper to help prevent uh, strokes, you know, the bleeds, you know, in people it's clots, pets it's the bleeds. Um, you know, so those are uh, kind of the basis of, you know, you, you can't ignore the minerals because uh, that, that's huge. You, you seem to have alluded to, uh, I hope I'm reading this right, do you actually make some of your own mineral formulas for animals? Well, I actually have a company in Utah that makes them for me. Um, oh, oh uh, where, Utah. where do you get some of the best <laughs> ionic trace minerals in the world? Yeah. Right yeah, out yeah. of Utah. That's yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so does it actually have your own label on it? So if someone wanted to start their animal on minerals, could they actually go to your website and, and get connected there? Uh, yeah, I, well, I don't have a, an actual link to it. I, of course, I keep the products on hand. At the, okay, they could come uh, out and visit can, Mustang. <laughs> yeah, but we can okay. get you know, the contact information or get it drop shipped or do something to oh, them. Oh, nice, nice, yeah, very good. It's, it's a big deal because that, to me, the diet and the, and the minerals, because you know, our, our, I talked to some wheat farmers out in western Oklahoma, and I said, when did you ever add minerals to your wheat when you grew wheat? And they said, well, last time was in 1965, and we had that red bag of minerals. Do you, you ever use that? I said, no, I farmed, and we never had that. But, you yeah. know, the minerals have to be in the soil. They've got to be broken down by the yep. bacteria and fungus yep. to the point where they're absorbed by the rootlets of the plant. So it's in, if you eat the plant. Uh, You're going to you know, get the minerals. Uh, or the animal that ate the plant, you get the minerals, and it's in a form your yeah. body can use. Yeah, it's enzymatically rich, right? You know, right. if you've got all the right microbes in the soil, you've got the humic and fulvic minerals in that soil, which I think are profound for large animals. I've seen friends of mine do incredible things that are big ranchers out in Colorado with those. We're winding down this particular segment. We've got one more to come. You've been listening to Dr. Terry Wood here on Ultra Life Today. Um, the way you can contact his office in Mustang, Oklahoma is 405-376-1320. 405-376-1320. And his website, terrywooddvm.com. Terry is spelled T-E-R-R-Y. Wood is W-O-O-D, and then it's D as in dog, V as in veterinary, M as in medicine, dot com, terrywooddvm.com. Um, I'm Josh Bellew. I'm Adam Payne, and stay tuned. We'll be right back. Our mission is to take nature's most beloved botanicals and enhance them with our liquid protein scaffold technology. This helps it reach your cells faster and better. With exponentially enhanced bioavailability, you'll feel better every day. Ultra Botanica, the feel good curcumin. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this last segment with this intriguing interview with Dr. Terry Wood. Uh, Terry Wood's veterinary clinic, holistic veterinary clinic, one of the only ones I'm aware of that's been around for decades in Oklahoma City. Heard about this gentleman so many times from different people, wonderful stories about uh, pet redemption when there seemed to be no hope. Uh, you can contact Dr. Terry Wood, 405-376-1320. That's 405-376-1320 or terrywooddvm.com. That's Terry, T-E-R-R-Y, W-O-O-D, D-V-M.com. Uh, I'm Josh Bellew. This is Ultra Life Today. Yep. Josh, this has been a fascinating interview. Hasn't it? Doc, as we've been uh, spent the last hour together talking about 
all different topics. Has anything surfaced in your mind that you want to touch base on in, in this last segment? I'm, I am intrigued by him. He mentioned photonic therapy, and we know some Photo, people. Photodynamic yeah, therapy? or I think he called it photonic therapy. And we know so many doctors that utilize specialized lasers to treat humans. you got to tell us what this photonic therapy is and what the benefit is and where did it come from and using right, it so for uh, animals. So help us understand. What do you, when you say photonic therapy, Doc, where does that take you? Uh, what it is, it's, uh, it's actually <clears throat> acupuncture uh, with a light. It's just 660 nanometer light. It's red light, you know, the visible spectrum, four to 800 nanometers. Um, that's it, it's not a laser. It is monochromatic, but it's not coherent. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been on a lot of discussion boards and they say, oh, my laser's better. Well, actually all we have to do is get that light through the skin to interact with the collagen underneath the skin. And the red light is the most efficient way to do that. Um, I learned it, it was actually, you know, I almost hate to say it, but uh, it was a, a free meal and an hour of continuing education. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. So, you know, I was in, okay, I'll go. <laughs> and it was uh, Dr. So what, oh, go ahead. Wait, when, when did you learn about this? Yeah. Oh my goodness! It's probably been about twenty-five years ago. Oh wow! You um, know uh, who was the doctor? Because because um, uh, Lou Phillips told us about he he used the same device and he was taught by um, who was his doctor? I, and I don't think it was David. Oh no no no! It was Doctor Larry McDay. Larry yeah, McDay, yeah, that's Cause, right. Because they've Dr. been Doctor Larry McDay. They Correct. used that, that same wavelength as an acu as an acupuncture tool to stimulate different meridians in the body very, very successfully. When is this indicated? Why would you look very at a dog or a cat and say, hey, this photonic therapy is going to be something that is really indicated here? Well, it, there's really nothing that, you know, I, I won't try with it. Oh, nice. um, I use it before and after all my surgeries because it, it oh, helps control pain, bleeding, and nausea. And I know I talked was out in Las Vegas, I talked one time, and a vet from Tucson talked to me afterwards because I told him, I said, at 10 days when I take sutures out, it looks like it, I did it two or three weeks ago. It's completely healed, looks great. Amazing. And he said, he called me later and he said, I have to leave my stitches in for three weeks or it dehisses, it comes apart if I take them out. Oh, before. wow. And I it, said, well, are, are you are you giving, uh, you know, uh, an NSAID and uh, uh, tramadol you know, as a post-op. And he said, yeah, that's what the local surgeons recommends. And I said, well, after surgery, would you knowingly take something that made your blood not clot and made your wounds not heal? Right. <laughs> Hello. Right. No. <laughs> right. So you mentioned earlier stimulating collagen by doing this. Is that the reason why your sutures and your the pets you <laughs> operate on are healing so quickly? Yeah. What, wow. What it, what it can do is that uh, Dr. McLaren actually uh, learned the principles of acupuncture from professors from the University of Beijing when he was an instructor at the University of uh, Queensland cool. in Brisbane. And so he learned it from them. I don't know how he learned about the red light, but uh, obviously there's no pain at all. It doesn't right. get hot. It's not painful. Animals tolerate it extremely well. And he's developed a system where he calls like there's 14 standard points in the human, 12 in the dog and cat, nine in the horse. And you do that. And then by the study of what you learn, I had the privilege of studying under him for about four years. Wow. You use other points to try to help it. Uh, but it's basically what happens is when you stimulate that point, uh, it will actually send a signal, uh, non-neurogenic, it doesn't follow the nerves, to the brain, the thalamus and hypothalamus, and it causes a release wow. of chemicals that goes to that body part to cause it to get well. So, you know, you can, you can stop bleeding um well so can i come so in I, and see I, you I, <laughs> for well, me well <laughs> i mean there's probably that something cool. there are light receptors on in the immune system and um i would not be surprised if this was uh had something to do with uh, the mesenchymal um stem cells and how we can activate them and their ability to actually recruit um different kinds of immune cells to help rebuild and restructure the tissues you know, we've seen something like that. Um, one of our one of our collaborators um, is a naturopath and an inventor, um, and an amazing Jewish guy who his training was uh, classically done in um, Georgia, 
not the Republic of Georgia, in the state of oh, Georgia. The state of Georgia. Okay. Yeah. Um, he so. originally hailed from the Soviet Union, but came here as a Jewish emigre, and he um, uh, pioneered the use of ginseng and berberine um, as a topical uh, wound wash. And he's seeing the That's same kind, really, the same kinds of. It's got to be Boris, active, right? It's Boris, yeah, yeah Boris. Okay. <laughs> interesting. It's just amazing. Interesting. So. Um, so you're literally taking this light therapy, this photonic therapy, and are you just stimulating the acupuncture meridians? Is that really or, what's or, going are on? Are you washing the wound with the with the light? Is that what you're doing? No, we'll I'll do the, you know the the twelve standard points and add some the bleeding and nausea points, and then uh, they they have an interesting way of describing it. But any scar, you know, you have to take off your western hat and put on your eastern hat. Well, the reason yep. that you have pain is because there's a dragon living in there. And we all know people that have dragons in them. And what happens is when you have pain, that dragon is hiding in a cave. Well, when he gets mad, he comes out, swishes his tail, and it's painful. So in traditional acupuncture, if you have a scar, you pin the nose, pin the tail, surround it with alternating gold and silver needles, and you kill the dragon. So because uh, scar tissue can block the flow of chi, and so it's very important. So when you've done a surgery, you have a chance to stop that be really almost before it gets started. So we'll do the standard points. After surgery, we repeat the bleeding, nausea points. Just do the scar, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. And, you know, you're good. Because uh, really? I really don't. That's amazing. Uh, That's amazing. Do Dr. Wood, what you just said, a lot of viewers are going to be looking at this and they're going to think hoodoo, voodoo, witchcraft, or whatever. But uh, I met, I met. It's not, it's not like I, that. It's not, no, a lot of people will be thinking that because just like him, when he first got introduced to holistic, he's like, you know, quacks. But what I said that to say this I met a doctor not long ago. I can't remember now even where I met them or came across them. I think it was a phone call. It was uh, that had been referred to us for some of our products. And they began to tell me these fascinating stories about having individuals come into their office that had surgery scars that might be 10, 20, or 30 years old. And they would do what you are talking about. And some condition this person had had for years would go away is that are we talking the same language here yeah yeah again treating those scars like that yeah, that's yeah. amazing talking the chinese theory the 12 you know meridian theory is that uh if you want to look at it it's called the ori h-o-a-r-y clock and it's basically the flow of energy the flow of chi through your body and it's on an eight there's three eight hour cycles and if those cycles are working then your body's going to work and if you have a scar that's going to block the flow of chi, and so that can't do what it's supposed to. And I, I've used this, you know, most people, you know, they'll come in and their dog's paralyzed or, mm. you know, it's had a stroke. And that, you know, I, I took care of the horses for a therapeutic riding program for about six or seven years. And, you know, horses range from 16 to 28 years of age. They were old. They broke down rodeo horses. And uh, I ended up... Uh, you know, treated them on a regular basis. Two of the horses couldn't safely ride the kids. And I got them to where they were riding kids safely and, you That's know, so no cool. drugs. And it, it you know, it, it was a, a big thing. Just, just with the infrared laser, just with that. Yeah, yeah, just the red light, 660 nanometers. So Adam, wow. we, so Adam we've got about five minutes left with Dr. Wood and, and I'm gonna make sure we give his contact information, but you know, things are evolving so quickly in this world, but today you've told us about some back to basic stuff, you know, feed your animals what they're supposed to fe be fed, and that's gonna really help prolong their life. Is there anything that's new under the sun that's kind of getting you excited in this world of holistic medicine for, for a veterinarian where you're looking at it and going, man, I'm gonna have to attend that conference or, hey, I'm gonna have to get this new tool Anything like that going on there in, in this world? Um, not anything. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that comes out. But, you know, I, I like you say, I just kind of go back to basics. Yep. You know, You've got your core therapies, don't you? treatments, whether it's traditional or holistic. And, you know, you, you do a treatment and it doesn't work on that bed. You know, you have to ask yourself, well, why didn't it work? And right. you know, many times it's because the pet either is on a very poor nutritional plane right. or and or their minerals are so depleted they can't respond. And so 
I and and I don't do hundreds of different things because there's a lot of people that you know can't decide what they're going to do because they approach it so many ways. Right. But my deal is is that if I can make healthy cells, do what I know to do, get them on a good nutritional plane, let's see what's left over, and many times that'll take care of it. Yep. So with about a minute and a half left here, um, and I'm just going to open the door because this will maybe be a segue into another conversation we have. Pets, I assume, get cancer. Is that, have you ever had opportunity to take an animal maybe that had cancer and just through your modalities of diet, photonic therapy, minerals, can you actually prolong life? And have you ever seen that turn around in an animal? Well, uh, thankfully, uh, due to Joe Tippins, he, you mentioned earlier. Oh, uh, yeah. That's I, right. The, the anthelmintic drugs. Yeah, I'm yeah. a bunch of them with Panicure and getting some really awesome results. Oh, wow. That's so that's cool. That's awesome. That is There's so a, cool. Two major universities on the East Coast are collaborating uh, and providing the ability to do a thyroid cancer study. So oh, I'm, really? Yeah, I'm really excited about can, that. Can you tell us really quickly what those universities are? Because we have so many people that tune into us that are walking down this road of autoimmune or cancer journey, and we love to follow that research. Do you know the names of the universities that are doing those studies? Yes, yeah, it's, it's North Carolina State University. And Brilliant. Yeah. And we, we'd love to, um, I can't wait to actually visit you in person and uh, come down and see your clinic. Um, there's so much more that we, I want to talk to you about in collaborations, um, not just in cancer, but in, in our anti-inflammatory products. Yeah. I would love to figure out a way to do a small clinical study with, with you around, um, uh, especially older dogs that are arthritic and can't get around as Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Now mention one more time, you said North Carolina State University. What was the other one? Duke University. Oh, Duke. Duke. Very good. Yeah, Excellent. Duke. Okay. We'll be keeping an eye out for that. Hey, you've been listening to Ultra Life Today, and today is almost like a baptismal moment for us because we finally landed a guy that is very renowned in the state of Oklahoma and even in other states for treating animals in a holistic veterinary environment. Do you want to contact Dr. Terry Wood? It's going to be really easy. The phone number is 405 405- 376-1320. Write it down. 405-376-1320. Or you can get on uh, Dr. Terry Wood's website, which has some cool information. Get to know him better and even uh, get your appointment right there online. It's terrywooddvm.com. That's T-E-R-R-Y-W-O-O-D. D as in dog, V as in veterinarian, M as in medicine, dot Com. Dr. Wood, we can't thank you enough for joining us today and putting up with all of our technical challenges we've had. Yeah. We made it through it, Doc. We did. Yeah, we had a couple. Thanks. Thank you, Doc. We really appreciate your time. Well, thanks for having me. I was glad to be here. All yeah. right. Well, for Ultra Life Today, I'm Josh Bellew. Adam Payne. Thanks for joining us.